Sorry? Can I just stay on my phone or no? You can stay on your phone. All right, guys. Welcome to the Ultimate WAN Show. We have never done anything like this before. We have had Austin as a guest. I have had Luke as my co-host. We have had Lou over there as a guest. We have had Marcus as a guest. But we have never done it all at the same time. Well, I, I shouldn't say we've never. I shouldn't say we've never done it all at the oh, same time. Man. We've never done it all at the same time on camera. There we go. Oh, there we yeah. go. Yeah. So, guys, we're coming Different to you camera. live from the. Actually, I want to give a shout out to Corsair. They're not a sponsor or anything for this, no. but we got kicked out of our hotel at eleven o'clock today, and I was like, um, we need somewhere to do the web show. Can we use your suite, like your massive, awesome suite with the pool table? And they're like, yeah, man, no problem. So we're coming to you live from the 51st floor of the Palazzo Hotel here in Las Vegas. We've had a great week at CES, and uh, this is going to be a fun show. There is no agenda. There's nothing. There's just... No plan, nothing. <laughs> this, is, this is the least prep, prepped WAN show, I think, ever. Because usually, even if we don't have a doc, we'll like kind of know what happened that week. But, I mean, nope. nope. I know Title Two happened. Yep. Other than that, CES. There you go. All right, intro time. It's, yeah, it's not the vision. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. What? I have to get it. Oh, it might be mine. Yeah, it's mine. Yeah, damn. And they can totally hear us right now. Sweet. Oh, hold on a second. We don't even have any sponsors today. We weren't even planning to do WAN show. We didn't add it. I don't it's have there. It's right there. No, it's okay. Drag it in. I don't no, care. No, you got it. Drag it in. Shout oh. out shout out to our CES sponsors. I though. believed in you. Phantom Glass with their awesome screen protectors as well as HyperX with their We've gaming got a video content on their channel. Soon for Phantom Glass. It's gonna oh. be super cool. Are yes. you gonna keep teasing that? Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. These guys have been teasing it. I can actually legitimately tease it because I might have been in it, yeah, and it might have been awesome. No, <laughs> it was definitely awesome, and I might have been in it. Can we? How much should we tease? Like what we did? No, 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 I, no, 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 no. That has no. to be. I'll have to see. All right. See. Can all we right, say right. it involves Austin's nipples? Yes, we can say that. We can well, say that. Well, we did it. <laughs> so it's a little bit late. <laughs> it's kind of implied, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you know, they can they can draw their own conclusions. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, so guys, we both were involved in the yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we really have like a hashtag or anything, so hashtag WAN show. I just hashtag I just create nipples. Oh right. no, I like that way better. <laughs> hashtag Austin's nipple. Hashtag hashtag Austin's nipples. Yeah. That is the WAN show. That is the uh, the hashtag that we will be <laughs> monitoring during the stream. Okay, guys. Success. Holy crap! What? There is already pictures of Austin's nipple. <laughs> that hashtag already exists. Oh wait, wait, wait can see it? Oh, no, no, no. There actually is a picture of my nipple on the internet. <laughs> is that it? It was when I broke my arm, and there's like a picture of me with like, uh, like a, <laughs> and a sling with no shirt on, yeah. so. Blockage? No. Yeah. That's actually kind of fantastic. <laughs> I love how I don't think like almost anyone's commenting about the fact that people are just straight up playing pool in the back. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's, there are people. Cool. All right, so guys, why don't we why don't we kick this off? Show highlights. Um, I mean, it's a good thing people are watching the show to find out what you enjoyed here because they're not going to oh, find that out by watching your oh, channel. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so this is the first CES. This is my fifth CES. This is the first time I've come without having to do a ton of videos. Right. Yeah. Like the yeah, first yeah. couple years, it's just like I did thirty videos by myself, and I was just like. Uh, Zombie mode. Exactly. So this year, I decided to take it easy. So I do have videos. Um, one's live right now. Uh, we shot. Uh, we finished two of the of my other videos today. Uh, okay. So I have three CES videos. And if you guys want to watch more CES videos, there might be some other tech channel that may have posted a couple. Um, I forget the name. I'm just gonna keep staring awkwardly in the camera. But <laughs> I guess they have. You mean like you always do? All the way. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're All right, I'm out. Oh, <laughs> that was rough. Someone's got to tag you out. That's how this system works, I think. Um, yeah, but anyway, show highlights. Ooh. Uh, okay, so I don't want to spoil my video too much. Okay, right? okay. Let me go over the stuff I did. Oh, right, because you, oh. you'll see, you'll see, you'll see the, you'll see the videos. Yeah, I didn't want to go crazy on videos this year. Yeah. <laughs> we have, we have the weirdest audience ever. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of cool stuff at the BMW booth. So we actually checked that out. They had, you know, the i3 and the i8. They had like inductive oh, charging oh, for the oh, i8. So literally yeah. just like part, you, part, you just pull in, yeah. park, and it's just like it's charging. That was Super cool. Super cool. Yeah. It was a really cool laser headlight demo where 
literally, it's like it can shine like a spotlight on anything. So like you could be driving down with like complete high beams and like if there's a car, literally the light would turn down for just like that tiny bit of car track. That's really cool. Or like you're driving by and there's like a deer, literally like it would like shine a spotlight on the deer using the laser headlights. Crazy stuff. Wow. That's sick. Um, the i3, it literally drives itself. So like you literally, like tap the uh, button on the smartwatch and the car pulls up. And like you see like the like the wheels spinning and everything, you just get in it. It like you cannot crash it. Like even when you're driving it, like you could like completely floor the car and drive toward like a barrier straight up, just like wouldn't hit it. Like literally just like stops. It's like no. Wow. So were they letting people demo that? Oh I ate tag in, tag in. Tag in right now? Good. Alright, there you go. I don't know how this works. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Microphones right here. Yep. Camera's over there, mic's here. Hey, uh, I tagged in. I tagged in about i8, um, but or BMW in general. I spent a lot of time at their booth, like a whole day, two days ago. He talked about the laser headlights. That was awesome, and that's not really legal in the United States, unfortunately. Laser headlights in general. So Audi's doing it, BMW's doing it, but it's not going to come here. So in Europe, they're doing that. Interesting. Uh, and then. The OLED taillights is another thing. I don't know if you mentioned that. Nope. It's basically a display on the back of your car. Two OLED panels and lots of diodes, and they're really bright. And they looked awesome because they had the whole laser light show, and those are cool. Any color you want. Uh, what else? The have BMW. you been able to drive it? I didn't drive it. Why I've driven the i8. Yeah. I have not driven the M4 or the i3. Well, I sat I in the i3 that they tried to crash, <laughs> where the dude literally floored it and it stopped itself, but then while it was stopped, he, just to make sure I knew, floored it a couple more times and the car wouldn't go. So that was mm. a lot of trust in that car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you have your seatbelt on or did they, did they tell did. you to do it? No seatbelt, well, it's okay. I had okay. my camera in my hand, so I kind of wanted to be safe about it anyway. Right. But, right. Um, but it was really cool. And then I sat in the backseat of one that drove itself. So, so it was summoned by a smart car, a smart watch app. And he pressed uh, to bring the car to him, yeah. and then 30 yards away, an, I, an i3 with no one in it starts rolling around the corner and pulls up right next to him and unlocks the door, which is pretty cool. Oh. That's actually pretty sick. Yeah. Oh. So I sat in the back of it, and the, the no, no, steering no, no, wheel started yeah. whooping around. No, actually, thinking. right when I oh, sat in it, when the lady like closed the door behind me, I set up the camera and everything, oh, and it was kind of quiet perfect. for a little bit. And I knew the guy had summoned it because the steering wheel oh, snapped the into the place, <laughs> and then yeah. slowly started rolling. And it was kind of cool. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. I know last well, year I did a video do? on the i3, right and this is the first time I'd driven an electric car. Okay. So I was going around Las Vegas, and they had, like, the, the route that you were allowed to go on. Mm -hmm. But my plan was, I'm, I'm hoping I'm past statute of limitations here. Uh, my plan was we were going to swap out drivers, because I wanted Brandon, my cameraman, to be able to try it out as well. But as we're coming around one of the corners, I was just talking about how, like, I like the acceleration and the torque in electric cars. Yeah. Coming around a corner, and there's this giant empty street. So I was like, all right, sweet. And I just stepped on it. <laughs> it was beautiful, it was amazing. Yeah. And that was the first time that I got to experience um, the braking in electric cars. Okay. Which was interesting as well because I maybe almost hit someone and had to change lanes like a couple times to swerve between them That's... because I was going too fast. Yeah. But um, anyways, statute of limitations, whatever. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. What other car stuff have you checked out here? Uh, I, I have done I8 uh, stuff, I didn't do a lot of I8 while I was here. But today I basically just shot a bunch of footage of the Tesla Model X that's right. in Panasonic's booth. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it was crowded, like I got to it on day one and of course it was crowded. I was like, alright, I'll come back later. Came back to it yesterday, it was still crowded. I was like, alright, I'll come back tomorrow. Today it should be dead. Today at 2pm it's still very crowded. So the footage is alright, uh, but there's a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff about that that I want to talk about. <laughs> Last well, they year. were <clears throat> they were doing a pretty good job of keeping it all right for you. I heard that some yeah. uh, some like white dude showed up and was getting all up in your space. Yeah, and yeah, the, and, yeah. yeah I, the, he had like a tripod. Uh, he like put a hand like, sir, he's filming right now. Go away. <laughs> it was weird because last year the video I did on, at the Panasonic booth was the Tesla Model S, but all the doors were oh. closed. The trunk was closed. You couldn't like look in. So people would like walk up to the car, look at it for a second, and leave. So I did a whole video about it then, and that's the first time I was in contact with Tesla after that video. So I come, I come to the booth today and I guess the guy was like, yeah, oh, yeah, you want to do a video again this year? Okay, I'll help you out. And basically just started like fending off people who got near me as I was getting footage. And I guess Austin was trying to get B-roll and he was like, sir, you're going to have to wait for this guy to finish. And I just kind of like, I was like, is that Austin that you just pushed up? It was kind of funny, but yeah, that happened. What do you think of Model X? Uh, it's a weird thing. So I saw, I did a 
Wow. Tesla. That's yeah, a good intro weird. for that. They're gonna put that on the marketing materials for it's it. It's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. We'll MKBHD. Put it on the yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I saw one at the. I did a Tesla factory tour, uh, and I saw an earlier yeah. prototype. Uh -oh. And the side view mirrors oh. were just cameras <laughs> pointed backwards. Every time. And that was another one of those legal things. Like, can you really do that? And apparently, in certain states, you can't. And then eventually, it's just like, man, might as well just go rear view mirrors. So they're traditional rear view mirrors on what I saw in the Panasonic booth. Other minor changes, like the doors have are different things. The seats look different every time I see it. Uh, but it's still a weird vehicle that a lot of people are curious about. Like there are tons of questions every time. So uh, the one thing that I'm, it's a it's a dual motor uh, chassis, but essentially dual motor system, the same way the P85D is. Yeah. Oh. The one thing is the doors when they lift Sorry. up. I was reading this in a Reddit thread. It creates these little cracks. Like if it's raining, you're just letting rain pour into your uh, car. So I was trying to get as many angles of the door opening as possible, but I only really got one. But it seemed like that could be a problem if there's just door fa water falling into your car every time you open the door. Hopefully that's not a problem. They might be able to solve that by putting like a fabric liner, a stretchy fabric liner or something. Yeah. But it's not solved yet. So. Yeah, and there's there's little things like this is um, this is on my wife's old. It's like a 2008 Rabbit. Um, but just even though it looks like the water should just drip down, yeah. they just the way they've curved the metal oh, it just rolls in causes it to just roll down. Yeah. So and knowing Tesla, they've probably thought of that. I think so. Hopefully. I have faith in that. But Let's, yeah, I'm excited. I think it's supposed to start manufacturing this year, so we'll see it around. One I'm of the just really you couldn't touch the vehicle was the doors didn't have the safety off installed yet. They yeah. Just close on your body. The hydraulics. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That would be bad. <laughs> They had to demo it very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I actually, I had a plan to check out a whole bunch of car stuff this year, and it's cool talking to you about it because I basically got to check out none, um, <laughs> which was not great. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Was, was, did you get to check out like Audi and stuff as well? Audi, no. I heard about their booth and I heard about stuff they did with the smartwatch, but I didn't get to visit them. Uh, so I guess I was I was kind of focused on like a few dense spots of the show floor mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rather than try to you know explore as much as I did last year. Um, but yeah, I heard about Audi stuff, but I didn't get to see it. I mean, I'm, oh, sorry, go ahead. This is kind of a completely offshoot thing, but it, was this the first show that you've shot on a red? Yes. I've done more shooting out with this camera than I do before. Every year it's fun. I mean, every time you get a new camera, it's fun to just go out and shoot and see what you can. Yeah. So this is one of those times where I'm just discovering really what this camera is capable of and how much I enjoy using it. So it was a lot of fun to shoot with it this year. Last year it was the C100. That Which we're using as a mic stand. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, I don't shoot outside as much as I would like to. So it's fun to get out and do stuff like this. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So you've talked about cars an awful lot, but was there anything mobile-wise that stood out to you at the show this year? Not really mobile. I mean, I saw the new G Flex 2, yeah. which was probably the most outstanding phone at the show, I think, that people are talking about. Uh, it seems like a phone people would actually want to buy, whereas the first one, cool concept, cool idea, but I don't think anyone's going to actually buy that. Right. So it's a little closer to the G3 uh, in its size and shape and, and aesthetics. Um, I'm good. And then there's the... Uh, Actually, it's not mobile, but I was actually impressed with I was impressed with uh, 8K TVs. I saw one in the Sharp booth, and I think in the Sony booth as well. Yep. And they were like 89 inches and 98 inches or something like this. But I can actually tell the difference in the way it looked versus 4K TV. Not gonna have any content. <laughs> yeah. It's not gonna look that good all the time. But it looked really cool with the the demos they had. These you could basically walk up and read fine text. Did you see the Sony projector? The fifty-five thousand awesome. dollar projector. Was it the, the pair? Wall. Sorry, the pair of projectors. The, yeah, the yeah, pair yeah, of projectors. I saw that. that was pretty cool. Uh, Seven inches from the wall. Yeah. And a one hundred and forty-seven inch image, laser laser projector. They hand build them to order. You wait six to eight weeks. It doesn't matter. You're the king of e Egypt. You wait six to eight weeks for your projector. Yeah. And as awesome as that would be, I don't have a wall that big in my apartment. <laughs> so it was cool to see at the demo. But yeah. I look like some Egyptian... This new light is... Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, pretty intense. intense yeah. I don't know what's going on there. I think Egypt is a democracy, by the way. Oh, interesting. Just mad sun. I'm literally glowing. This is fantastic. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know how like oh, yeah. pregnant women get that glow? So you're all going to envy me now. I'm like four times pregnant. Don't even worry about it. All um, right, so go ahead. What is your favorite stuff of the show? 
I mean, for me, I think this is this is a pretty obvious one. Um, I get really excited about thin and light laptops. I get really excited mm -hmm. about high performance gaming, and I get okay, super right. bummed out when there's no such thing as a thin and light laptop that performs really well, that has great battery life. That I mean, I'm, I'm just asking to have my cake and eat it too at this point. So um, I don't know. You probably didn't check out like any computer stuff at the show, Not right? Much less than last year, which wasn't open in the first place. Yeah. So uh, MSI of all people mm -hmm. has a laptop yeah. that's hyper thin. It's uh, it's actually lighter than yes. I believe it's lighter than the MacBook Air. Wow. But don't quote me on that. Super light, 13.3 inch notebook. Oh, wait, wait. And basically it's got like this proprietary You're slot in the back. And you slide it into this dock that's pretty boxy. It's like pretty big. And then inside that dock is a full desktop graphics card. Okay. So you just, you power it down. You take it off, in order to take it off or put it on. And then when you boot up, the computer doesn't even know that there's onboard graphics. You're just running directly off of an external graphics card. So you'll get exactly the same gaming experience pretty much on this laptop with an external monitor. Yeah. And then you want to go somewhere and have it not be like heavy, yeah. super That's, light. Would there ever be a way to get it to be able to undock and redock without powering down? That's probably a lot more difficult. That is a lot more difficult. With Thunderbolt 3 or something, okay. it could be possible. But, I mean, uh, the rumor now, though, is that the, the new MacBook Air is just going to be USB 3 Type-C. I saw that, and I tweeted about that because I feel like the next version of it will inevitably have two or three more Thunderbolt ports. And, oh, we listened to your complaints, and we saw that, and now you have more ports. But okay. the only port was that one. And I feel like, so when you're charged or charging, you don't have any ports. That's well, okay. Kind of a problem. I heard a conspiracy theory that what they're going to do is they're going to have the power brick have your I.O. on it. Yeah, I would believe that. Okay. Interesting. That yeah, makes sense. Still, what if you want to use the I.O. without the power brick, though? Well, you always have your power brick with you. No, not if you have a Mac. I mean, if you're just going to class battery. and no, you want to bring this laptop to class and, oh, I also need to plug in a projector to do a presentation, does that mean you need to be plugged into the wall also? That is kind of annoying. I feel uh, like... I'm not sure on that one. The, the guy seemed pretty convinced though, that it was a totally possible thing. Like, I could see a sixty dollar breakout cable yeah. in the Apple Store, but I just don't know how, how they would make that happen. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, sixty. That's uh, that's pretty reasonable for an Apple <laughs> for, cable. Yeah, yeah, for an Apple accessory. <laughs> USB Type C is pretty nice. Though. Have you been able to see yeah, it at show at all? Nope. No, I haven't no. seen it yet either. So you, really? you saw it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's okay. So it's it looks oh, really oh, similar to micro USB cable. That small is scary. It's quite small. Yeah, it's a little bit okay. longer it seems and the locking connector on it is pretty intense You don't see teeth or anything. It's internally locking, right? So actually the first couple times that I plugged it in I didn't realize that it was that it was locked that it was I, I didn't push it in all the way Because oh. I hit the end and was like, okay, cool and then it was like, that's all right. And it sat in the port fairly well. But then actually Nick Van Berkel went to go plug it in and plug it in a lot more aggressively. And it clicked, <laughs> like audibly clicked. And then to Shut take it out, man. you kind of have to like jostle a little bit and take it out. It's quite a locking cable. And is that done? That's or is that prototype? Done. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's a, like the port and the cable are both fully released. The motherboard is not completely ready yet. One problem that they're going to have with them is actually something that Austin was talking to me about earlier, which is where the standards for the cables and the ports and the devices are going to be all over the place. It's going to be a mess. It's going to be a complete mess. Is it reversible mess. or no? There's, yeah, there's several. There's the USB that just charges. There's you have USB. to tag someone out if you want to talk. You can tag me out if tag. you want. There you go. <laughs> I didn't know you could tag out a co-host. There are no rules yeah. on the WAN show. Oh, no, rules. no so you, got, you, tag you can tag me out. This can be Marcus Austin loose <laughs> yeah, for all I take over. If you want, uh, you want to let me loose on that, man. <laughs> no, um... So basically, the, uh, the guy I was talking to, he said there are going to be several different kinds of these Type-C connectors. So, there's some that will just charge, there will yeah. some that will be just USB 2.0, and there will be the, I think he said, the full-featured. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, the full-featured ones oh, no. are the ones that can handle DisplayPort, handle 100 watts of power, handle USB 3. Like it, that's that's the one that you're you want. To know that when you're and that's the thing. That's what I was asking about. I was like, well, like, how are you supposed to know that? And he's like, well, we're considering maybe putting like like little flags on the cables to show. But he's like, but that's manufacturers stupid. are not going to want to like do custom like branding or something on it. So I'm like, man, that, this seems like a major problem. That is that is such a PC thing to do. Like that is the kind of thing that. That, like everyone knows, I love the PC, blah 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 blah. But Apple doesn't do that stuff. 
If yeah. there's a if there's a cable, there's a cable. But you know what they're probably doing <laughs> is they're probably saving on the copper wiring and the shielding yes. in the less expensive cables. Yeah. So they're trying to be like, oh well, we have a low cost USB two only version, but that's going to be a disaster. Mm. I mean, what made USB good is the U. The U. Mm. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You made USB good. All of you and you. Whoa. And you. Thank you. We Thank all you. made it possible. It's all because of us. I appreciate the recognition of my accomplishments. <laughs> I'm on it. Yeah, so it's it's gonna be interesting to see. But that said, being able to do 100 watts of power, display port, USB, all this kind of stuff over one little tiny cable, which I was not really quite sure. I had seen like the pictures and videos of it, and it just looked like okay, whatever. But it's almost the same size as uh, micro USB. It's very slightly wider. I think it might be slightly thinner, but it's for all intents and purposes, basically like micro USB, which is awesome. And it's reversible. I don't know if you guys talk about that, but it's like, yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Is it reversible? Yeah, you can completely reverse it. Um, the one I played with, it was just in like a like a little kind of custom thing. It wasn't like it wasn't a final cable. Yeah, but when I was plugging it in, it seemed like it it seemed solid. It, it wasn't like like it's gonna fall out. It kind of felt a little bit like if you guys ever like tried like a lightning cable. He was describing locking it, where plugging it all the way in is sort of a thing you have to be conscious of. Oh, I didn't see that at all. Well, just, essentially, just, it's just internally like locking. Self you have to maybe the and then just upload it, it all and the go way in. for it. And then Wait, it would, you know, which reminds me of micro USB also with some phones. Wait, I don't have a cable for that. Yeah. On some phones. Figures yeah. So. I just realized we never did our video where we announced that the show's live. So we've only got like 3,000 people watching. So you guys, you guys are the real MVPs. <laughs> That's a solid amount of people wow. watch for no video. Just, what is this from tweets? Uh, just, uh, we, well we have like, I think we have like 80,000 followers on Twitch. Oh, okay. So They're like it goes, out, it goes up to those guys, those guys, in theory. I think Twitch's subscriber box is even worse than YouTube. Whoa! It can take like 24 hours to send an email out too. Yeah, so unless we do a 24-hour stream, a lot of people will- I mean, I don't have any flights for a few hours. We can just miss ours, right? Like, that's cool, right? Yeah, we'll just- we're gonna- we're gonna stay here in the course of our suite. We're gonna lock the door. They're never gonna get in. <laughs> Barricade. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Upgrades all around. <laughs> all right, so I, I got to pick on you again now that you're back Time. for a second. Let's do it. Let's do it. You made, you made one video so far, yes. and it's about Razer's micro console. And I got to yeah. wonder, was that that exciting to you? No, because no, 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 no. like, it's, it's been done before. Like small Android box connects to your TV over each Mac. Okay. Stop me if you've heard this before. I've heard this one before. No, no, no. The reason I did that video first was I was in the Razer booth. Um, I was actually waiting, we were all hanging out, and John was shooting videos, so like I had like 30 minutes. So I started yeah. shooting, I was planning on doing some kind of like laptop roundup or something. So I started shooting, you know, some of the laptops in the Razer booth, and then they started talking with me about that, and so the Forge, so I did a little bit of video on that. And then I started playing around with it, I'm like, wow, this is actually really solid. And I started playing with the control, like, I really like the feel of these buttons. And then the, the, key, the, the turret, I was like, this keyboard magnet, what? Like, yeah, so like, it was kind of like, I started shooting and shooting and shooting, and by the end it was like, yeah, this is a full video. So it really wasn't planned, like, I didn't expect it to be some kind of crazy thing, but I was actually pretty impressed. I think the turret's my favorite thing in that video, even though, like, it's called Razor Forge TV. Right. Did you guys, did you check out the turret? I know. I would didn't even go in the Razor booth. All right, you, you did though, right? <laughs> yeah. You did a video on it, right? Yeah. So basically the turret is, it's a like a little dock with a mouse and keyboard. So basically like it's meant for like playing like a game or something on like your PC for like, sitting on the couch like we're doing right now. So basically you pull it out, there, there's the keyboard and it folds out with a little like trackpad. You take the mouse, it's about this size. It's a, it's a fairly small mouse, Yeah. but it's magnetized to the trackpad lightly. So you can still, like it still has good tracking and everything. But basically like you can still, you know, sit here and game without like leaning it and like having it completely fall off. Or on your 8K TV with your crystal clear text, you can- right. You could actually use a, a massive screen like that from the couch. That sounds yeah. pretty sick. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it was surprising because like I just moved my gaming PC out to my living room. And I love being able to play on my TV. Actually, I got a video on that. Um, but it's, it's not the best having to deal with the mouse and like running cables. And it's like it's not really great for sitting on a couch and having to deal with all that stuff all over the, the coffee table. So this looks awesome. Okay, changing gears a little bit. You guys are camera dorks. Did you at yes. least find a chance to stop by Parrot? Uh, I was there on our way to Razor, and I was hypnotized because everyone's oh. standing there with the, their yeah. phones taking videos of it. So in the 10 minutes it took to walk past Pirate, we took the, we saw the, I guess it was a show. 
basically, yeah. of all the drones flying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah. So the, the Bebop looks like a badass piece of machine. Yeah. I missed that. What is that? Okay. So the, the AR drone 2.0 mm. is a toy. It's garbage now. I don't know. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's their, probably going to be their biggest seller, essentially. Yeah. Because that's what people are going to see in the commercials. It's a couple hundred dollars more for the Bebop than it ever was for an AR drone. I think those were, those were 300 right, Luke? Yeah, AR drone? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere like that. So Bebop is 500 and has some crazy technology. It's got GPS in it. They've got a, a range extender. So you still control with Wi-Fi, but they've got a range extender that can go to two kilometers. Whoa. And wow. it has like uh, actual control knobs and everything. Yeah. And you can get a live video feed from two kilometers away flying the Bebop. Um, wow. Original Whoa. AR drone. Um, oh, hold on, yeah. Sorry, what? Oh, uh, you can use this. I'm not doing anything with it. Okay, so um, range of two kilometers. Right, so the original AR drone could only go like maybe 12 feet high. Really, it uses, that's it? Yeah. It uses an ultrasonic sensor to know how high it is. Uh, so if you ah. went too high, it lost track. And it just freaks out. Yeah, yeah. it's just like, goodbye. Wow. So this one still has that, but it has uh, a pressure sensor as well. Mm. So you can actually fly it up really high. 1080p camera, 180 degree lens. Mm -hmm. um, it has support for Oculus. So you can wear... That's that's pretty cool. That, yeah. That's pretty cool. So there's HDMI Whoa. out on the control module thing. Can you... Is the moving of the head associated with the moving of the camera okay. as well? Whoa. Or is it just looking in? I believe so, but I'm not sure. Because that would Whoa. be the ultimate video rig if I'm just standing on the sidewalk and getting oh. sick shots by myself. Dude, that reminds yeah. me of that video, that, awesome. that drone video. That's, I was gonna bring up DJI, because yeah. they're doing a bunch of things with the Inspire we have a, and... Yeah, we have a video coming on DJI. Okay, yeah. drone is pretty crazy. I was messing with the Inspire 1 yeah. a while ago, which is much bigger and much more expensive and has a 4K camera and everything, Still but stuck. controlling it, you need a separate person on yeah. a separate controller. Yeah. And that was cool if you have two people and you can do that, but uh, yeah, Oculus on the face with the dr I want that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I want that. Yes. That I totally awesome. want that. So cool. So um, so that that was really cool. And oh, and you guys saw the air show then, right? Yeah. I, so, mean, I was walking past it, but I saw like the nine or so drums. We, uh, we actually, got, oh, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about this. Um, it's like, there's only 3,400 of you, so it should be fine. As long as you guys each only tell three people. And it's all good. Then we should be fine. They actually took us in the back, backstage of the air show. That place is bananas. They wouldn't let us take any pictures, no video. Relax. But it's crazy. They just had drones on drones on drones on drones on drones. Whoa. Backup drones, like, backup props. Yep, yeah, repair tables, like all, all these parts. The software that they're using for this thing. Because the way it works is they had a patterned stage underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's got to be custom software, essentially. They're yeah. building that? Yeah, so, oh yeah, a complete, oh, full custom. Yeah. So the bottom camera is looking at where it is, and so they're able to do like flips and reorient, mm. figure out, stay exactly precisely where they were. Get this. When they set up the booth for the first, oh, I really don't know if I should say this. Okay, when they first set up the booth, it wasn't working. Yeah. They were here until oh. 2 or 3 a.m. the night before the first day of the show because they had it working perfectly oh. back in France. Mm -hmm. And you, you take something like that, you pack it up mm. on like a plane. Yeah. You ship it to you know, Las Vegas, you unpack it. So Something's going to be different. If something was slightly misaligned, wow. all of a sudden a drone oh, no. hits another drone, oh, right? no. Because yeah. they don't know where each other are. That's high stakes stuff. I was saying, like, if one drone taps another drone, it's over for that show. So you got to be uh, you got to be careful with those. That was it's awesome. crazy. But drones are cool. I was impressed. Drones are cool. Yeah, I'm really, I'm but really did excited. Did you see, there's a YouTube video. I don't know when yes. it was uploaded, but it's kind of blowing up like yesterday and today. Oh, I haven't seen it Of a it guy, sure. it's his first drone flight, and the DJI drones, probably all drones, when they get low on battery, uh, oh, yeah. they just lower themselves to the ground slowly wherever they are. So it's a, it's a shot of a guy flying it over a lake. And it's pointed back at the shore, and you slowly start to see the drone go down. And they you start, see him running and freaking out. out. I don't want to spoil it, but it's one of the best oh. videos. I'll probably tweet it later. I already see where this is going. Yeah. No, no, no. You, it's an excellent might. last yep. second save. Does it land in a boat? It's it's an excellent last second save. Yes. That's it's awesome. You should right. leave it. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. He's leaving it at the right point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. It's so worth cool. watching. I'll definitely tweet it later. I didn't All know. Right, cool. Ah. <laughs>
DJI's drone was pretty sick. I think it could go like 60. Are you tagging me out? I'm still working here, so oh, there's no fine, point in right. tagging oh. you out. Um, but I think it can go like 60 miles an hour. Inspire one? Yeah. So I think it's 75. 75? Yeah. That thing's insane. <laughs> and then like they're like, yeah. The legal limit for height is limited to 75. Oh, the height, the height yeah. is also limited. When we were messing with it, we, nah, I shouldn't say that. Yeah, you shouldn't say that. But it was, yeah, the thing is The capable. legal limit awesome. exists. Absolutely. <laughs> he put such a huge, like, audible oh. disclaimer on legal limit, letting me know, like, it's drastically higher than this. Yeah. I think it goes a mile things. in every direction. Yeah. So but what's yeah. some of your favorite stuff? What's from my what, sorry? Some of your favorite stuff from CES. You know what, some of the stuff that I enjoyed was just like, I don't know, kind of kind of dumb stuff. Like, um, we saw the world's smallest and lightest PC motherboard. It's like 12 grams or something like that. It's got like 4 gigs of RAM. It's got an interface on the back that supports a 512 gig SSD. It's like this big. They put it on a scale for me. I'm just like, this is stupid. It's like, it's like, it's it's years of engineering. It's kind of dumb. This is, I'm just like, this is ridiculous. Like the heat sink. Yeah. is literally a piece of copper foil that sits on top of the CPU. <laughs> like, All right, that, that is a little ridiculous. I like, this is awesome. They're like, yeah, this thing turbos to like 2.6 gigahertz. It's a dual core. Dual yeah. core what? It's a uh, core i5, whatever. No, this is like, no, this is Broadwell. This is like some Whoa. serious business. Wow. Where's this going to oh. go in? Like, Pack it up Ultrabooks, CES, Ultrabooks it tablets. Um, Asus had like these hyper thin tablets that sit in the keyboard dock like they do. But they were like super thin, x86 based, full Windows 8.1. I saw a TV from uh, Sony, right? Sony? It was yeah. Sony. The, the super 4.6 thin Android millimeter TV. one, yeah. right? Yeah. And I walked up to it and I guess lose the Ben guy, but if you ben want to tab, tab, me, tab me out if you want. But you walk up to the TV and you can literally <laughs> grab it with two fingers and just twist it. And it's, it's still an LED panel and you can move it around. It looked really good, but it was very thin. So I think there's a solution to that. Uh, we stopped by Corning. Uh, Corning usually has awesome demos. Yeah. And this year they right. didn't have anything practical. Like I think we I'm couldn't... in right now. I can be here and be in. We, All right. We couldn't. Uh, we couldn't just kind of like drop stuff on Gorilla Glass like I've done in the past. But this year they were showing off a TV that doesn't have a plastic diffusion layer. So for an edge lit TV. Normally you'd need a plastic diffuser in order yeah. to get the evenness in the backlight. So they've developed a new glass that emits light evenly <laughs> over the entire surface. Instead of you light it at one end and My it's really camera. bright and at yeah. the other end it's really pale. Thanks so they were saying so that well. this will enable thinner Thanks TVs for, uh, because with plastic eight. you have to put a lot more structural components right. in. With glass you actually add a lot of structural strength mm -hmm. and, it can be, and, and it can be hyper thin. Hmm. Wow. They also had that, that, uh, that wire I was telling you about. Mm. They had um, glass wow. filament optical fiber that instead of being designed to hold the light in, is designed to let the light out evenly. It's so light, they had a helium balloon floating wow. on. Wow. And it's, uh, you, so it's, uh, you put a laser in one end and it glows. They had a guitar that you strum. And it like, Dude, it's all sick. winding the guitar, it was sick. There's some wow. cool stuff at that CES. Like, I, oh, no. we were over at the Sharp booth no, no. and started looking around. They had some crazy displays all over the place. I didn't see Sharp at all, Sharp so. Sharp had, I think, one of the better booths yes. for the, the panel stuff. I mean, there's TVs everywhere. But you saw, you've seen the Sharp Aquos Crystal, which has those, you know, minimal displays on the top, right, and left. And, it's a phone, yeah. Yeah, it's a phone. And they had other examples of using that bezel-less technology in car displays and other shapes displays, a circular version of that with no bezel, uh, like gauges a random other shape of it for a car dashboard and examples of things like that. It looked pretty cool. I have videos of that too. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. And there was also the, was it 89? What was that? The 89 inch, the 89 inch 8K TV. Yeah. And the 98 inch 8K TV. Yeah. They had the, so they had those, they had a completely bendable display that was like wrapped around a pole. I don't know if it's bendable. I think it was oh, just, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. it was just, that's the shape it was made. Right. It was, right. They, they were showing off that they can make displays in all these different forms and shapes. And they had one wrapped around a pole, which was interesting. So it reminded me of like a time square as you see except an actual TV right yeah really cool well, I'm, I'm so I'm actually pretty excited about HDMI 2.0 <laughs>
true. Yeah, so that's that's maybe fine. Not, maybe not that excited. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe like, not quite like that excited. Party time. No, no, I'm okay. I'm a two point oh. Yeah. No one can be as excited as you are about it. I'm I'm pretty excited. Very soon. Jif or Gif? Gif. Dude, I say Jif because that's the way it's said to be said. Jif oh. is peanut butter. How dare I don't remember how I said it before that thing. How that dare whole you? article. Uh, I don't remember how I said it before then. All right, we won't get into this one. All right. <laughs> Yeah, HTML 2.0. <laughs> <Ronnie, laughs> mm. I dance a lot. HTML 2.0. Thank right? you. Actually, yeah, HTML 2.0 because yeah, like, I have there's a Vizio TV that has HTML 2.0. So I had a 970 hooked up to a 50 inch Vizio 4K TV, HTML 2.0, 4K 60 hertz. Dope. Yeah. Yeah. Not not that terribly meaningful for actually. This is something I get. My audience in particular is is begging and pleading me to do 60 hertz videos. 60, yeah, 60 FPS yeah. videos. Um, and something that, that I want to kind of address here, and maybe if I have such credible gentlemen here in the room with me to back yeah. me up on this, you guys might actually believe it. 60 hertz is great for gaming. Yes. It's great for viewing frames. gameplay. F yeah, thank you, thank you. A 60 hertz display with 60 wow. FPS content Dude, is great for gaming. Right it is great for viewing yeah. gaming content, and it's great for sporting okay. events, very high oh, speed, mm -hmm. very high speed imagery. For something like him sitting in his room, <laughs> talking like this. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of drop a bombshell here. Okay, I'm ready. We we uploaded a video whoa, at 60 whoa, FPS. Whoa, whoa. Bombshell time. Whoa. About a Dragon? month ago. Okay, yeah. and everyone freaked out in the video. They're like, "This is so great." Oh, what? It was a, it was 60, it was 60 FPS, or it was 30 FPS content, it, 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 and yeah, I just exported it at 60 right FPS. Gap placebo. Oh, gap. nobody. Caught it. Wow. Oh. Yeah, you can't make frames. Those are pretty big bones. Whoa. Wow. I mean, Whoa. that says a lot though. Cause you yeah, I would I would have looked very carefully into those comments. I feel like I want to go back and find that now. But like people wow. ask me all the time, when are you gonna start doing uh, 60 frames per second videos? Well, so hang on. I don't have, think that's no, any of you guys here seen the Hobbit in 48 frames? I haven't actually uh, see, I saw the Hobbit one in 3D, and I was so disappointed that I didn't bother seeing Hobbit 2 in 3D. I saw it in 2D, and I haven't seen Hobbit 3 because Hobbit 2 was terrible. Hobbit 3 is better than Hobbit 2. Uh, also, but that's like oh, saying on, that this on, dog shit right. sandwich tastes better I would, than like the like cow shit I, sandwich. I would say <laughs> the Hobbit, it's gonna be great when someone cuts oh, into a two hour movie, takes oh, all three and cuts it into a two hour movie. Yes. Oh, anyway, back to, back to 60. So, yes. if you guys are familiar, can I get it? Okay, all right, all right. All right, I'm getting kicked off my own. Okay, so, have you guys seen the Hobbit? Yeah. Yes. I have not. You have not. Okay, I've yeah. seen all three. What did you think of the first one? Yeah. Way too long, but okay. And then the second one. Awful. Third one? Not bad. Right? Yes. Like, I felt the exact same way. The first two were elongated garbage. Yes. Unfortunately. Even though Extra I love... storylines, all kinds of just... Oh. Like, they, they were enjoyable in parts, but there's just so many things that just, like, you pulled you right out of the story. Yes. Because you, like, why is this happening? Yeah. Why are dwarves able to fight this well against... All these other things. It's like, I just, has anyone else seen The Hobbit on a tag? Yeah. <laughs> What's happening right now? <laughs> okay. Word. Linus, you can come back now. No, no, no. We get, we're talking about 60 FPS video. Oh, 60 FPS video. Yeah, yeah, you can probably talk about that. So we, that's why we, why I brought up Hobbit because I thought Hobbit was actually pretty decent. Did you watch in the 48? I watched the first one in 48, and I enjoyed it. I could, I could tell it wasn't. Okay. It was still a little weird, right? Oh, yeah. It almost yeah. felt like if you watch like an early like uh, like movie you know or something. Like? It's like watching one of those like Spanish TV like, like a soap opera. Soap opera, yeah, one yeah. of those, and it's distracting. It feels and it far feels like a different genre. Real. It's a like I don't know, is it to, real? Though? Well, I feel no, like, it's, like to me, okay, to me, um, forty-eight frames per second. And anything higher than 24 or 30, even right. 30 to a degree, it just, like, cinema, like, if you're talking about a feature film, not, a, not like a YouTube video, but a feature film, you're there to, like, get immersed in that yes. storyline, okay. right? That's what you mean. So, it no longer... It's, it becomes a distraction. Exactly, exactly. Like, and the frame rate should, the, any technical aspect of the, the movie should not be taking you out of the story. It's like if you problem. shot a whole video at f0.95. Yeah. And it's like, nothing's in focus. Oh, Everyone's cool. noses are in focus and their but, faces are out. Yeah, it just doesn't look like it's, it's no long, it's distracting again and uh, it, it takes you out of the story yeah. and it's a technical feat, sure, but does that mean it's better? Unnecessary. I don't want to take anyone else out, but. 
I have a question for the yeah. three guys. Okay. This is something I'm not super educated on. Uh, Lord of the Rings, yes. Peter Jackson, yes. known for like crazy mm. mountain pan shots. Yes. In the mountain pan shot in Two Towers oh at 24 okay. FPS, my brain hurts. And in the new one, when he pans through the mountain and it shows all the gold, right. when he's doing a really quick pan of all the gold, mm. it just looks disgusting at slow. Yeah. Yes. So I, I feel like part of that is just because 48 is that FPS. His fault or no? I feel like high frame rate stuff is new. I feel like it's it's not figured out yet. Yeah. Like there have been high frame rate videos, but like it's never really been like really worked out as like as far as like for movies. Like this is a fairly new thing. So I want to say like usually it's fine. It's just those like those two kind of shots. Yeah. So quick pan. When you shoot at a higher frame rate, you also have to shoot at a higher shutter speed. Yes. When you pan at a high shutter speed, things become jittery and choppy and weird. So those big sweeping shots might look cool at 20. Four, when everything's nice and smooth, but when you start, it's actually 24 FPS. Yes. I'm making room for Burko. Burko, come here. It's a weird looking oh, Bring it in, bring it in. It's a big couch. You just, you saw it. Saw it. I'm taking it. I don't move the 11. For someone, I don't know who. So just, just, just join. Just join. Bring it in. Can I touch it? So, I feel like. 60 that. FPS video like, looks awesome for sure like, like Linus is saying gameplay is it's great but for like a normal YouTube video of like me sitting in like in front of my desk like my face doesn't look that much better in 60 <laughs> FPS right. right it looks a little bit better but not that much for the amount of data you have to add in each yes. clip to to make a you know a, an efficient workflow well yeah that's the other you're thing. just adding I don't know you're, you're really putting a burden on yourself right. if you're adding yeah. 60 frames yeah. for for what sort of difference really right so well and the other thing that a lot of people might not know if you don't use a camera like really often you're not really diving into it is when you shoot at a higher frame rate you need a higher shutter speed and you need more light yeah like and all of those things add up to oh man this experience is not this is like this is throwing me off and that's why i think like it's a creative choice for peter jackson to do an aerial that's so fast that it's hard for people to kind of register it that's his choice he could do it differently to make it a little bit easier on the eyes can we just pause for a second and say that we mentioned 60 fps video now we're like a bunch of lord of the rings nerds arguing <laughs> <laughs> Can we just like the WAN show is descended? It's a cinematic discussion. Blind just stood up for 30 Blinus seconds, guys. Just, uh, we took over for 30 <laughs> seconds, and now we're like complete nerd. <laughs> right off track. I feel like I gotta tag out. I will tag out and take one for the team here. Alright, so what's the topic now? You get to take over. I think you gotta lead this. The topic now? This is. Alrighty then. I'm just gonna read the chat until I come up with a new topic. Ask me, Hail Nick MLG. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it said like, LMG. Never mind. That's a different one. I do like uh, high frame rate video when it's slowed down, though. Absolutely. I can take advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. I had some stuff, um, the BMW i3 when it was avoiding crashing. Yeah. And I it was shot at like 90 frames a second, and I do everything at 30. So basically, you have the car going towards the barrier full screen, and you the full speed, you see it avoid crashing, and then I replayed it, and you can see it. You can see the people in the car like shift forward. You can see a little bit of the tire shifting. It's cool. It's cool to see that kind of stuff when you slow it down. Slow motion is ridiculously awesome because like the amount of things that you can see that you would never be able to see in real life. Yeah. Like if you like. It's Phantom. Little details. 1200 oh frames per second, 2500 yeah. frames per second. That camera's on another level. The things that you can do with that thing, just in like literally, you cannot see that with your eyes. Mm -hmm. Your eyes will not be able to see that. I yeah. feel the same oh, way from slow mo oh about uh, time lapse, too. It's like you can't see a time lapse with your eyes. Like just in everyday life, you can't exactly. see something be faster than yeah. it usually oh, is. Oh, but then when you God. see a time lapse of like the clouds or something like that, it's just this like phenomenon. It's incredible. Yeah, these and that's 8K, just really, yeah. these 8K TVs. There's no 8K video to show on a lot of them. <laughs> But in order to make an AK video, they show a lot of these time lapses. Yeah. With like 28 megabytes like of photos. From like a large format camera. Exactly. Right? So they're rolling through these 8K images, and it's just surreal looking at like yeah. a whole city for a whole day <laughs> as the clouds roll by and the lights change in 8K. It was just crazy. Like just like, just like you're looking outside right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty insane. And you actually said you noticed like an actual difference between I think I, significant yeah. it looked to, like, well at that TV. at that size right? like <clears throat> it was an 89 inch TV right. where I looked okay. at it I was like that looks better when you're seeing something like 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 42 inch or something like that I don't think you can exactly ever <laughs> really tell 15 feet away from it looking mm -hmm. at it depends on how far you sit from it depends on how big it is but yeah I feel like if I'm if I'm putting it on a wall way over there. 
I might not notice that difference. But it's all about the distance, and like, there's like always an optimal, especially with a lot of the curved TVs. Unless you're like directly in this the exact yeah. spot, you're not really getting a better. Experience. Although I did see one manufacturer claiming that was better for. Uh, Okay. Yeah. There's one curved TV that I kinda that I kinda get. Do you wanna um, take me out? No, no, I'm 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 playing. <laughs> um, crap, I forget who it was. They showed it they showed it last year as well. But basically they I okay, I got mixed messages. Mixed messages. But they were saying that uh, one person told me that you could actually change the curve, so it's that flexible TV. Uh, who says that again? Sammy? Sam I think that yeah, you're right. I wanna say it was Sammy. Yeah, so, heard so, about that. so you can curve it all the way. Mm. And then you can uncurve it all the way. Let's prototype one that they have there. And someone told me that you might be able to stop in between. So that would be super cool. You go flat if you've got like 10 guys over. You could go all the way curve if you're watching by yourself. Right. So <laughs> I guess if you're that into the curve and you have to have it for yourself, then that would be a good option. Good Get middle ground. One. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I have a curved TV, but I never watch it with 10 people. It's usually one or two, so we just sit in the middle of the couch and it's fine. Yeah. But I saw like a curved TV like on one of these rotating stands, yeah. and it was saying, look at how many more viewing angles there are, and it just twisted the TV around, and you're like, ah, I guess I could see that. There wasn't any color shift as it got to the edges. So yeah. Maybe it's a benefit. I don't know. Well, actually, one of the really early... Um, I read an article recently, um, and the, Sony is actually making curved sensors for can, like they're developed. It's not. It's like it's super early. Not even like. Yeah. I mean, and they haven't even found the perfect use case. But I think the idea is that it, the way that if you can curve a sensor, you can build a lot more like technical. Um, stabilization and stuff because Sony's got their stabilize their five axis stabilization. I'm thinking of sensors. what benefits that would have over just different glass. Yeah, like what would a curve, what would an image from a curved sensor look like? Would it just be distorted? Sure. I don't know. Would it be something like it's 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 where it's brought back, it back it? after? It's know. super unprecedented, and that, and, but it's interesting because like the, the article went on about how I think in that technology they've somehow managed to figure out how to gather more actual light than you can with a flat sensor. I don't know how to, they did that, and that's that's it, 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 yeah. but again application is kind of but yeah, and it's 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 not just more light. It's like they're getting crazy amounts of dynamic range, like mm -hmm. twenty five stops. Like, okay. can you even think? Can you fathom that, that, twenty-five I like stops? That number. That sounds great. <laughs> Kidding. Holy wow. crap! Well, hopefully in CES in the next couple of years we'll be seeing something yeah, like 20, that. Yeah, twenty twenty seventeen or NAB. No, oh, oh yeah. Have you ever been? To, have you, no, 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 no. I guess you go to NAB. NAB. As much as let's I go. Can. Let's go to NAB. Yeah, let's just go right now. We're in. Yeah. Just wait here till April. <laughs> I like how this has totally been hijacked from you know. Yeah, there's not even there's no, <laughs> like, like a PC <laughs> electronic party, party slash show. Yeah, we're gonna take that. All right. Thanks everyone. See ya. Tag go away. No more cameras. We take over. All right. Just Austin and I. The Austin and Luke show has just begun. Welcome. Hopefully you're enjoying the camera talk. Uh, no more of that. No more cameras. Hi. Now we're going to talk about face mounted displays. Face mounted displays. Like because that. I've seen the Oculus booth and most of the other VR booths. Right. And you've very specifically seen all the other VR booths. I've seen right? all the things. So, is, bro, your, so. is your other one up? Is that video up? That video is. No, we, that was what we were shooting. Oh, a little bit of that was shot today. Yeah. Awkward. I'm. Yeah, most of my stuff can go up later. But yeah, I can talk about it. So. Um, I tried a few different things. So first of all, Gear VR. Have you tried it? I have it. Gear VR? Definitely, I've tried it a few times. Okay. So I hope you're with me. It's awesome. It is awesome. Oh, so I played a game. Uh, if you guys don't know, uh, Samsung Gear VR. It's like just you throw the Note 4. It's kind of like a like a housing for the Note 4. Kind of yeah. a little bit like Google Cardboard, although it's a little bit. It's, it's quite a bit nicer. It's nicer, yeah, for sure. But the Note 4, I mean, it's got that 1440p screen. You know, Oculus was already using Note 3 screens in the DK2, right? Yeah. So it. It's actually, it makes sense. It's a really it. nice screen. It's a very yes. good visual experience, if nothing else. And it is good in other ways as well, but its visual experience is definitely awesome. there. Yeah. Yeah. So the demo I tried, do you know the one where it's, it's you're constantly flying forward and then you control, you're entirely controlling it by looking around and then you tap the side to shoot? You know what? I don't know if I've done that one. I've okay. done quite a few demos. That one blew my mind because that one kind of showed one of the big advantages of the Gear VR over something like Oculus. It's completely te uh, untethered, right? So like, I was able to like spin around because the entire controls are you looking. Yeah, so like I can yeah, spin yeah. my chair around, do everything, and I wasn't tethered. So it was it was like I was just like this, like, 
Yeah. Like, I looked completely oh. insane. But that's awesome. That's exactly yes. what you want from a virtual reality experience. <laughs> yes. Because so, in the real world, you might look insane, but in the game, it makes a ton of sense. Yeah. That was, I was literally, I took it off, and I was, like, grinning for, like, five minutes straight. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, I felt, that felt exactly like it felt when I tried the very first Oculus. Yeah. Uh, with the Eve Valkyrie demo. Yeah. Or whatever yeah. it was called back then. Eve VR, whatever it was. Yeah. That, their original version, like, I tried that, and I was just like, this is the greatest thing ever. I pulled my phone, and like, okay, I gotta order one of these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your VR was, like, that same experience of, like, whoa, this is really, really awesome. And it was on a phone. Like, yeah. it looked awesome. It was on a phone. So, your VR. Like it's it. very, very impressive, and I like that you brought up the non-tethered experience. Yeah. Because that is a big deal. Um, hopefully stuff like wireless HDMI stops being kind of sort of junk. Because, you know, well, like, for, in certain situations it's good, but not for virtual reality, because it's right. too slow for that. So yeah, that's, that, junk that's exactly for it. that, I don't mean junk in I've general. heard Oculus, they've talked so much about trying to get every tiny like millisecond out of the, uh, the yeah. latency. I don't think wireless is going to work <laughs> well, well unless they have... Them, at least for a very long time. Although, yeah. looking at how good that Note 4 was running, I don't think we're that far off from having like, an entirely untethered Oculus. Like, yeah, it's I think clearly you'll possible. Have, you'll have troubles with like the big, crazy yes. games, but then I also think that uh, games created as both experiences might mm. become less and less of a thing over time. Yeah. Because people are starting to realize that when you build a game around a like keyboard and mouse or controller experience, those are actually right. much more similar you can't, than a VR experience. You can't really shoehorn a normal game go, ah, uh, throw Oculus on it. You yeah. really can't do that. It's the, working for now. Yes. But in the long run, well, that, I, I, so. it's working. I feel like, yeah. like yeah. I haven't seen any like awesome experience oh, on VR that was not already like designed for VR. I haven't seen that some of them go like, ah, uh, throw it on. Like yeah. a couple things work reasonably well. But yep. like all the best demos I've tried on VR were completely made from the ground yep. up, and a lot of them are simple too. Like this, I was literally just flying around shooting ships, but just because I was in it and I was spinning around and built for you, exactly. Like yeah. that, that, that's a big deal. So I think that's a huge part of the VR experience. It's not so much the hardware. I feel like hardware is almost at this point good enough. Like the 1440p screen, solid. Yeah. But that soft, the, the software really needs to. I feel like. Catch some up quite some things in terms of hardware are going to be interesting because, uh, and this ties in again to the needs to be built for it yes. idea, um, because if you can get really close up to things, texture resolution becomes a huge problem. Yes. Because if you're like this far away from something, the texture resolution on that item needs to be very high for yeah. it to not look terrible. Because the resolution on your screen can be great, but when you're too close to things, it can just ruin the experience. So right. things need to either be made in a way that like, say you're in a ship, the things in the ship have a really good texture resolution, right. and then the objects outside of it, which won't get that close to you, could maybe tone it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's where performance might become an issue, because yeah. te high texture resolution is going to be a problem. I feel like VR is like an entirely like huge step beyond yeah. anything like yo know, sure you have like 1080p screen or 1440p screen but like considering just how different it is and plus yeah. you gotta keep, keep in mind that you're running it for both eyes you have to keep like a what 75 frames or something like that for it depends yeah. which one I believe the new unit the what is it Crescent Bay is a 90 wow. hertz no is, is it 90 now of course you can run your game it's slower than that but it has the potential of running up to 90 right yeah. yeah so like they're, they're, it's massive sure yeah. yeah I, I almost feel like it's gonna yeah we just, just watch the video but I almost feel like VR might just kind of like push a lot of hardware to like step up the game like you know you're not just running a 1080p screen like this is an entirely different deal yeah honestly right now um, and it's it's not the same as when like let's like say 10 years ago but right now most people entering the gaming scene can buy a pretty freaking affordable computer right and be totally fine no problems running high frame rates all that kind of stuff the second you jump to VR if you want to run 1440p screen mm -hmm. 90 FPS Imagine something like Crisis. Ridiculous. It so hard. So that's going to be interesting. But then again, experiences that are designed and tailored to be yes. on VR, where they know these performance oh, issues are going to be a problem. Like uh, if they can make something, and that, that's another cool thing about Gear VR too, it has its own store. Yes. So you're not going to be trying to do the PC experiences, you'll be doing stuff that's made for Gear VR, mm. which is perfect and that makes a ton of sense and people will be able to go in there with the knowledge of what they're building it for and be able to create things that make a lot more sense for Gear VR. Untethered experiences, mm -hmm. maybe don't make it so you can get super close to things, make it more of like, and, and like super close to things, I mean literally in your right. face. You can get as close as you want. It's not like you're, yeah. you know, looking at it from a TV that's like five feet away. Yeah. And you can like, like the second close. you get any amount of distance off, uh, text resolution isn't nearly as important. Mm -hmm. it's, it's when you're like, hmm, I want to see like this screw on this object. Mm -hmm. 
that's like, one of the first things I if do. If I look at this mouse, well, I put it this yeah. close to my face, I can still see all the detail, yeah. right? But like, if it's sitting on the table, I don't need that much detail. So you, right. you figure it's like a, ah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Have you tried much yeah. VR stuff? Not a whole lot, but Nick I did is... really like the Oculus demo. I don't, yeah. I, I don't do super well with like fully yeah. immersed oh. VR. Yeah. Like, I get a little dizzy motion mm -hmm. sick sometimes. Mm -hmm. Really? I really enjoyed the. Uh, yeah, that should get demo. better for you over time. Yeah, yeah. experiences no, no. become a lot. Did you stronger. check out the demo? Did not. No. Oh, it was three hour line. Did, did you hear about it? I heard a little bit about it. No. Okay. okay. It was interesting. Oh, they had. Really cool. uh, I think this was the first time, at least at a show that I've been at, that they've they probably done it before. Fully developed. Uh, not even demo that. They've, they've had fully developed okay, okay, demos okay. before, um, but it was standing. Oh yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a standing experience. So you yeah. stood on like this pad, which was kind of like like so that you knew where you'd be in frame of the motion capture camera the motion capture camera is a lot wider frame vertically mm. and horizontally yeah. and there's now ir tracking leds that can track you when you're sideways and when you're mm. not facing the camera yeah. so it's not an untethered experience right but it's kind of in between because yeah, before yeah. it was a seated in front of the camera this is what you have to do experience now you can stand up and you can move around a little bit more you still have a cable yeah there's still like a box that you have to stand in both of yeah. those things are not the same as gear vr yeah right um but we saw some pretty crazy demos there was there was uh one where there's like a dinosaur coming after you mm -hmm. that was pretty cool we went through an unreal uh engine demo which was yeah. sick i brandon and i both did it and both of us like naturally tried to dodge the bullet, yeah, yeah. which was, was like nuts. Glass flying and glass right? flying at me, and I'm like, oh geez. Wow. Like, wow. Legit and I've used development kit, development kit two enough that I've basically gotten rid of those natural responses. But with the new one and standing and just being out of all those elements that I'm used to now, it's it's triggering me again to start moving, which is really cool because that immersiveness is huge. The only thing that kind of broke it for me, uh, which will be a problem for Gear VR two, but not necessarily everything, and hopefully new controllers come up for this, is. The second something got in my face, I wanted to go try to grab it. Yeah. And I put my hand up, my hand's yeah. not there. It's it's immersion breaking, um, and we'll also need, this is again where maybe Gear VR won't be super in this direction because physics right. events will be really hard to do. Right. But games where you're shooting stuff or whatever, totally fine. Um, but on desktop ones where they can put more processing power into the physics and stuff, if you're able to wear like a glove, Mm -hmm. yeah. That is tracking your hand and has some amount of haptic feedback in it, um, and grab things and move them. Like well, if so you could do that superhero scene where you're running and everything else is in super slow motion and you're going at full speed, yeah. and you can like grab things that are in the air and throw them at people and stuff like yeah. that could be so yeah. sick. Brandon well, so was talking about. We that. took a little bit, like a little bit of a look at something like that with Razer OS VR today. Yep. Yep. And that yep. had basically it was a leap motion right on the front of the headset, and the demo we tried was like you you hold your hands out and you yeah. have like fireballs that and you like throw them and it was just tracking your hands right so you could like track your individual fingers hold it up high <laughs> and you could just like throw it at like the the, like, the ghosts that were flying around i feel like that might be a, a decent kind of like middle ground yeah but the tracking no, at least totally makes sense the tracking at least for me was a little spotty. it was pretty rough it didn't yeah. work that often now there's problems with that with uh interference because we we're in the hall but, yeah. but it's not gonna fix the problem um, it's, it's like need, a stepping stone. Yes, for sure. Uh, I also tried another leap motion implementation, which was at Sulon's Cortex. Mm. That was hot words. Uh, it probably worked about like 10% of the time. But a lot of that, again, mm. due to interference in the hall, because they right. were in an area with a lot of robots and stuff. So there was a lot of radio interference. I don't okay. know how that messes with leap motion, but yeah, they, they yeah, were telling me that was a problem. Um, and yeah, there was some serious issues with hand tracking there. But then yeah. again, at OSVR, jumping back, uh, yeah, very specific positioning. Yes, which was you were a like frustrating. Constantly, like it would lose track. So you hold your hands up, like uh, okay, I've got it. Eh, no, I lost it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was that was frustrating. You can get the hand of it, but um, get the hand of it. Get it. Yeah. Sorry, I had to. Um, but it's it's those are the kind of things that we have to overcome, especially when it comes to input, because. Um, a game like that, I didn't even really think about it at first, but I was talking about manipulating objects being difficult in terms of processing power. But a game like that would totally work for something like Gear VR. Yeah. And if you could get better tracking... You know, Gear VR has a note built in. I wonder if you could like somehow leverage like the, the rear-facing camera or something. I know that there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's like a piece. Like I wonder if like moving forward, like you can kind of work out... Exactly, yeah, because like you think... 
if you're working with a phone, right, you have a lot of stuff. It's already using like sensors and whatnot, but I wonder like you work, work cameras in. Like, oh, that's a good idea. That's I feel cool. like there, there's more that you can do if you're working with a phone. Like before this, I had zero expectations of Gear VR. It's just some goofy thing that they made. I mean, I liked Google Cardboard, but it was yeah, it was decent, but it wasn't. Still it didn't blow my mind. Right, but Gear VR, I'm actually I'm paying way more attention to like some kind of like fully you know built. I don't even fully integrated. Hey, Jaren. Hey. Hi, Jaren. I feel like there's more people behind this, too. What's up, bro? Hi, guys. Go on. You can tag in if you want. Just let me know. <laughs> but, uh, you yeah, know, I'm actually way more excited about some kind of like fully, like, what? Uh, integrated headset. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that would be really cool. I'm gonna jump to Sulan's Cortex. You didn't yeah, I haven't, I haven't that, tried right? that one yet. Okay, so the idea of it is there's a spatial scanner on the back of your head. Right. There's stereo cameras on the front. And then other okay. than that, it looks a lot like um, an Oculus or a Gear okay. VR. It's untethered. <laughs> okay. So okay. the idea is that the spatial scanner and the stereo cameras take in the environment that's in the room ah. and then recreate it through. So there, there's an almost direct pass-through kind of style thing going on I, I, I where yeah. I can, like I was standing in the room with Brandon and some of the guys that were doing the demo with me and I could see Brandon and the guys <laughs> through the cameras. Like it wasn't a recreation, gotcha. it was through the cameras. Um, and then there was a portal Where's on one side of the room. Yeah, so I walked from where I was and went through the portal and then the whole structure of the room, the walls, Brandon, everything oh, was gone. Wow. And now I'm in this like dragons, yeah. or it was a, what was it? A Hydra layer. Mm -hmm. And I had to fight this Hydra and it was a kind wow. of funny idea because this was shield block and this was shooting spells yeah, and it was based yeah. on a leap motion. So when I went to OSVR, I was like, this is oddly familiar. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the problem with that was Huge issues with hand tracking. Mm. The screen was not ready. Like I know you were not yeah. stoked on the OSVR screen. I wasn't either, but the yeah, Sulans right. Cortex was worse. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now this isn't the final version. Yeah, of yada, course, yada, yada, of course. So they're going to be they're going to be replacing the leap motion. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the problems with tracking will be gone. They're going to be updating stuff like the screen. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they'll solve those issues. Like it's it's very early on. They didn't even let me film in the area that I was able to do the demo because they didn't want you to see the unit that they had that had like some wires going all over the place and stuff, um, which I thought is kind of silly because Oculus is like, look at every single version of everything we've ever made right. that looks like trash, um, which I, like everyone I know thinks is cool. Um, and then they didn't let us film like an external screen for what the demo I was going through was either. Right. So yeah. I wasn't able to show that. I mean, demo. I can understand. Like, you're working on something that's a prototype and it's not done yet. You don't want someone to make a video. Like, look how much this thing sucks. Like, when it's not done. Yeah, but now I, I I'm talking here about but now you're how talking I about it. Everyone's assuming it's way yeah. worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? Like, if you could just see the experience. Because it wasn't, it was a good proof of concept. Right. I don't think it's ready. And it's obviously not. It's not released yet. Um, but I don't know if even their release will be ready. Because I know they're planning on, they're trying to get Taryn to poke one of us. Um, I think the, the Twitch chat is, I have to do, do that. It. I'm sorry. Um, Austin. Yeah, they have development kit releasing in however many months, and that yeah. is, as far as I know, the only development kit they're going to release. And then CV, they don't have a release date, but as far as I can tell, they're getting close to what they want the final version to be, mm -hmm. and it's not ready, in my opinion. But this idea of spatial scanners, stereo cameras, mm -hmm. and being able to interact with environments that are very similar to the room that you're in are interesting. The other demo that I had from them was, so same kind of like rectangular room. There's right. an engine in the middle. Okay. And I remapped the room so I could see the wall. So I could walk up to the wall and touch it. And the wall was actually so there. So you're talking about the, the actual like physical wall that you were- The like, physical wall, So you're yes. walking around in this demo. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I could walk up to the physical wall and it was recreated in the headset. So I could walk up to it and touch it. Now this was virtual, so it was like a glowing wall. Mm. But it, when I touched it, I actually touched the actual real wall, which is kind nice. of a cool experience. That's cool. To be completely honest. Wait, you could touch the wall? Yeah, I was, it was it was a, a demo that I could walk around in. So it was a big rectangular room, mm. and I could walk around in it. And the headset has stereo cameras wow. on the front and a spatial scanner. Oh. So it recreated the room in the virtual reality headset. Oh. And then you can go around and like touch the walls and whatnot. Nice. That's amazing. And then, and oh. then I touch the engine oh. seductively. Is it, is it time that we all like start lounging? Is that sure. part of the way I can show? lounge, but if I lounge back, I'm just gonna Then you'll get, be touching my penis. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna get a little bit personal. So I'll go a little bit lounge the convertible back, reality so it looks like it's happening. Someone else. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Bring it around. <laughs> to, to keep going on my more boring story, there's an engine in the middle of the room floating, and you can go up to it and look at it and all that kind of stuff, and then if you hold your hands in front of you and go like that, the engine will 
explode isn't the right word, but like all the individual pieces well, will come out, out and mm -hmm. you'll be able to see like all the different screws and each individual piston and all that kind of yeah. stuff. And then if you put your hands up again and pull in, the engine will reassemble itself. I'm sorry, I can't take you seriously with him right behind me. <laughs> I'm so used to him screwing around that it like almost doesn't bother you're, you're immune to this Yeah, I'm just like, whatever, it's just happening. <laughs> this is a thing. This is yeah. daily that's, normal. that's exactly the line that I've been waiting to hear all my life. <laughs> Get the fuck. The oh, wind show! Bro. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright, so now that you're here, uh, hi. Hi. First of all, I feel hi. like I just took over. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> this is a little show called The Wind Show. Uh huh, yes. Glad to have you on. Uh huh, yes. Uh, it's basically we talk about uh, The Hobbit. Uh, oh, people yeah. love talking about cameras. Yeah, Best yeah. part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We talk about VR way too much. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So welcome. Uh, what, what, how, how's your day going? Well, I was thinking maybe we should actually look at that hashtag that we told everyone to use. Hashtag Austin's nipple. Or is it Austin nipples? Austin S nipple singular. Okay, Austin's nipple. Austin's so I have nipple. one nipple. All right. Um, <clears throat> okay. What, some, some, what about the porn set? Oh! Okay. I don't know if we have time for that one. Well, we just turn the camera around. <laughs> Andrew says this is seriously the coolest WAN show. I love this community gathering it of is. YouTubers. <laughs> this is fun. This is literally like there just happens to be this a camera rolling. Yeah, I, I, how yeah. did that get there? Did they even notice that TLD today and your average consumer are back there? Yeah, you guys, come on, come on. Come on up. Tag yourselves in, my friends. I just, I just want to... Welcome to hashtag Austin's Nipple. I wanted to point something out, which is that we're not supposed to be using the pool table. <laughs> you got to point that out? Of course That's how it's going to be? Corsair staff only. Corsair. Oh, apparently I need to... I, I am getting, I'm getting booted. Booted oh, from the right. show. What's going on? Wait. You guys, you guys, guys take, over. take over. Take right. over the show. Step in. We can't take over. <laughs> sure. Yes, you can. Linus, you got to join us. Uh, I can't do this all myself. You got this, man. You've got I'll this. You, okay, okay. I, I, how about I talk about the thing that I thought I was I made really it. Cool. I made it. Everyone's been looking at my crotch. Okay, it's cool. It's, this all is right. Terran Tech Tips now. Terran I have the alliteration, <laughs> and that's what, what makes it What have you cool. seen at the show that you okay. like? Okay. Uh, I will tell you this. All right. So the coolest thing that I saw wow. was... Um, well, did you swing by the Intel area? I was barely wow. there. Okay. I was there for like, only with you today. So we were passing through there and I saw this guy with a robot hand. Oh. Yeah. That was 3D printed and yeah. I was I was just staring at it. I was like, what? Does he have like a real hand under there? Is, is this fake? But he did not have a right hand. Right, yeah. So yeah. he had like, I don't know, he was born without a hand. Um, and and it was like up to up to here or, or or here is when it stopped. I couldn't tell because so like fairly far yeah. down his forearm. But they used an Intel scanning thing to scan what army had, yeah. and they made a three D printed mold from that um, to go on the rest of it. And then they had the regular, I guess, the stock kind of hand, which was connected to. I I suppose there were motors. I think it was uh, done by wire or something, okay. Okay. like because how a yeah. tendon works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then he was wearing something tendons. on his hip as well. Yeah. And there were all these sensors all over his actual arm because he was mind controlling this 3D printed mind hand. control. And it was just the, the coolest thing. And he was shaking people's hands and I shook his hand. You, yeah, and yeah. Then you said it, there was a yeah. wrist. So, so if you don't move your, no, no, no. No wrist action at all. It's a little awkward trying to shake oh, with no yeah. wrist action. That's kind of yeah. weird. Yeah. So, Interesting. but it was still amazing. It was still the coolest thing ever. He could do the fist bump. And he yeah, and then he did explode. He yeah, explode yeah, the yeah. fist out. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, That's really cool. So I didn't, I didn't know that it was possible to have to mind that control degree, of a yeah, hand. Yeah, I know because I've seen the the guy that has like two new arms or whatever. I oh, saw that oh yeah, yeah, video. yeah. I saw that one, but they had to like go into his chest or his brain, and, like yeah, it was really yeah. painful. I think it was both. I'm not yeah. even sure. I, I didn't look enough yeah. into it. Yeah. But, um, and on he the could topic, only move one thing at a time. Yeah. 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 But he could control both arms. Right. Um, on the topic of like assistance of the potentially disabled, um, one thing that I saw at, what is it even called, Showstoppers. Uh -huh. uh, so like kind of CES, like the attachment okay. thing in CES, it's not, it's not yeah, actually I didn't see that CES one. so far. Yeah, it was just um, Brandon and I actually. Okay. Um, but it was a like external exoskeleton kind of thing. Oh. I'm, I'm not oh, thinking of the right oh, word. Oh, is that, well, is that exoskeleton? Oh, is that the right word? It's, what did it do? 
it's, yeah, just pull one right I feel like I'm doing the wrong one, but like you strap it to your legs yeah. and your yeah. arms yeah. and stuff, and then it assists movement. Yeah. That's what exoskeleton. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, I, I, for some I, reason, I, I think there's a different word for it. Well, I, it, there, there's a word for it that's not exoskeleton. Yeah. But I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So is this for Maybe workers or for disabled people? This is for uh, people that don't have proper movement in their legs. I so, like, have the person, a cousin uh, who okay. has that problem. Okay. So the and person. She has one of these. That won't distract me. Oh, does she? Yeah. It's 3D printed. Interesting. Yeah, so the person uh, that, that, that they had there was a disabled veteran, <laughs> uh -huh. and he was able to walk Your around so with completely disabled <laughs> right. legs yeah. on his feet. He Wait, had to support himself a little walk. bit with crutches. His legs were completely disabled and he could legs walk. Legs were completely disabled and he could walk. That doesn't make sense to me. He, he had no muscle control or just a little bit? I don't think he had any. Because how can you walk if you have no control at all over your because legs? Because the, uh, I think, what was it? Through like, I think, hip motion? Really? You would trigger the machine to move forward. Oh, okay, so it's got, it's motorized. Yes, no, okay. definitely. That's okay. the whole idea. Okay, because yeah. the one that my little cousin has, it's I think it's rubber bands. Mm. And you just, you, you put bands on, because she's missing a lot of muscles. Right, right. Um, so they're like, like replacing yeah those. exactly yeah no this was he was in a wheelchair most okay. definitely and they they had to help him strap in wow. and like lift his legs and strap the leg yeah, and that's all cool stuff. stuff but then he could stand up he had to use uh, crutches because I believe I was thinking about doing a video on it but then I was just so far out of my league on this one that I, I didn't think it was a good idea um, he was able to use crutches because he would lean forward it was kind of like a segue but with legs so if he leaned forward and put a little bit of weight on his crutches, his legs would start moving. And right. then if he stopped leaning forward and stood up, the legs oh, would that's stop cool. moving. It's, so a, it was, it's a bipedal segue. Yeah, kind of. That's and great. I'm like, man, this is super cool, but I like can't explain how it works or anything. Did we get video of it? No, no. Okay. Speaking of um, <coughs> speaking of people being able to roll around, did you guys see the virtual presence booth? Today, I saw it. I, I can't remember. We I can't remember. past it. Yeah, I can't remember who it was, but they had this crazy demo of like a like a sports mascot type character, and then they had like a gigantic virtual oh, presence one. device. Oh, that was so oh dumb. yeah, no, I saw that. That like uh, basically what looks yeah. like crowd control from like dystopian future device. Yeah, yeah. 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 There yeah. was there were different Ridiculous. sizes, and there was the one massive one. It's yeah. like two stories tall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when we stopped. By. That one was singing the hokey pokey, oh, and they had, no. they had like nah, ten nah, nah, nah. smaller yeah. ones. Yeah. And they were doing the putting their butt in and butt out, and I don't. They didn't have arms or legs, so that giant one though was like around. legitimately like that was. I was. It's yeah. That it inspires some, fear. Yeah, that's what it is. And it's hooked up to the speaker system, right? So it's yeah. like, and you do the hokey pokey, and you turn yourself around. And you better do the hokey pokey. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I I just been for thirty seconds. What hokey pokey tower? <laughs> there was a the giant. Were you the robot? Giant, uh, giant two story uh, robot. Yeah, I was gonna show it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. We're just talking about that. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. It's that, so that, that creepy. That tops my like all-time CES list. Like their their booth was creepy enough because we were just <laughs> yeah. we were just standing in it and they just had people remotely get, trucking around in the booth. In the most so, like, awkward conversations ever. Yeah. So these people just walk up to you and you're just like, <laughs> hi, hi, yeah. And then there's the big scary one that can crush you. Dude, seriously, that thing was had to be at least thirty feet tall. It just seemed to put like uh, like flamethrowers on it, and then there you go. Yep. Crowd control is complete. We're done. We're done. Oh, it's screwed. Robot overlords. Robot overlords. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's so that's right. that was your favorite thing was the hand. thing? That was the hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. That was. I just saw it. and I'm like, ooh. I think my two favorite things. Obviously, I'm gonna say I picked two instead of one, just because everyone knows it's gonna be. Whatever badass virtual reality product is there. So this year, right. for me, it was uh, Crescent Bay. Um, I was, I was honestly, I was more excited for Sulons, but Sulons wasn't ready enough for it to be I don't better know what than is. Sulons was that that one that has the spatial scanner and the two stereo cameras. I was telling you, it recreates the room and there's the. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was Crescent Bay, and then other than that, that Origin laptop with the full desktop processor. Well, that's been done before. I know. Was it a lot thinner though? It was a lot thinner. Because okay. I have a lot seen lighter. The it, it seemed more like it was very similar to this one. 
in right. terms of size. So it, it, it seemed like I'd, I'd probably say that it was a little bit smaller than our Jay-Z's. Right. Not much, but a little bit. Um, now, one thing is it screams. Right. To keep the processor cool. Not here. So once you ramp up, it'll just start going nuts. Like, absolutely nuts. What's up? They're complaining oh, just, about the background noise again. We're getting complaints about background noise again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't hear you. Jerks. Jerks. We, we, we don't have a proper mic. Actually, we've only got about it's 10 right minutes there. left, so if there's anyone who wants this, to jump in, anyone who hasn't Hello. been on yet, say, for example, uh, now's a good time. Okay. Yeah, and maybe, case, maybe hang case. out somewhere um, else. What did you, you have in here? The, uh, <clears throat> Oh, oh is he gonna come? Is it, oh, are you, are you gonna talk out. about this? I'm coming in, I'm coming in. All right, okay. all right. Wait, we gotta tag. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 I almost like shook your hand. No, yeah, yeah. No, it's, 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 is that it? Is that a tag? Oh, I don't know. I think, <laughs> so. I think you just tap a guy on the shoulder, yeah. realistically. Whatever. I think we went a little bit too much. Uh, all right. What's up here? So okay, so over here we're a little bit. Behind. This is the stream. This is what I need this to know. This is about. like if you're on a yeah. Watch that one. And so the the camera's like way over there. I can't believe they let you touch it. No, they didn't let me. They have no, well, at first they had no idea this was going to end up in my hands. Oh. It was John, right? He went on a reconnaissance mission. Good work, John. And, uh, you know, he's a bit of a smooth talker. And so he went in there and uh, walked out with this baby. But immediately after, they started to panic because they knew where this was going to end up. So can you read the front hands. of the, can you read this okay. box for me? Okay, for people who don't know what's going on. This was one of the few things that I wanted to see at CES and get my hands on. This is supposedly a bend proof, proof. iPhone 6 Plus. Oh. Proof. Not resistant. Proof. Not resistant. You proof. believe these guys? They're ridiculous. Um, defend against the bend. It is the trestle from Incipio. Now, the thing is, and I want to be clear, mm -hmm. this is a prototype. Apparently, it will get even stronger, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to bend it. <laughs> Okay, so do you have a phone here? Are we doing this? Uh, no, I don't have a six plus. I got. Uh, I'm gonna hit up the Apple Store, right. Caesar's Palace after this. And, Guys, uh, make sure you don't miss this. Okay, yeah. so yeah, we're gonna try to break the internet again, but probably won't happen. Uh, maybe for Incipio, maybe we'll break Incipio. I don't know. <laughs> Could you bend the phone with your ass uh, or something? And would that I'll, break yeah, the internet? That um, <laughs> that's I don't if you know. You oil up a little bit. I don't yeah, know. It depends on the type of viewers we're looking for. Right. right. If you can right. balance it, balance the champagne glass <laughs> while you bend the phone. <laughs> yes, that would break the internet. Yeah, believe, probably. Actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just yeah. get a, you If know. you get Kim Kardashian to bend an iPhone six right. with champagne on her butt, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there you go. Well, well I don't solid. know. We're gonna need some Photoshop skills, though. Yes, <laughs> live up to, the, so. last, live up to yeah. the last image. Uh, but anyhow, yeah. So the concept here is that they have reinforced it with these rods, which are supposedly titanium or will eventually be titanium. Uh -huh. I don't believe they are at this point, but. Basically, I mean, I, obviously, I don't assume that this thing will ever be bend proof. I mean, what does that even mean, bend, bend proof? Proof is, proof is an interesting thing. Like, we did a video where we were trying to uh, check the fire resistance on a NAS. Yeah. And the whole time, all the firemen were like, yeah, there's nothing that's really, like, fireproof. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's all resistant because under a certain set of circumstances, you're going to mess anything up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I suppose in this particular case, they just went a little bit far on the branding and probably the retail box won't say Ben Proof anymore. Anyway. <laughs> that's something when you're done gonna, with it, That's something they're going to want to change. But the crazy part was when they didn't want to give it to me, it was like, this phone wouldn't exist if it wasn't for my original video. And I'm not saying that like to, to blow myself up. To be it's clear, the case, case, not the phone. Oh, yeah. did I yeah. say phone? Yeah. 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 The iPhone 6 Plus never would have happened if they didn't know I was going to... No. <laughs> um, yeah, the case, was. it's like a result a response to the hype from the video yeah so it seems kind of crazy that we wouldn't work together on how to do a piece of content around it that's yeah. actually specifically what i thought when they said they wouldn't give it to you i was like why not even let them try the prototype and if it yeah. doesn't work just be like we'll do better exactly whatever yeah. Who embrace cares? it have the conversation yeah. but yeah. uh what i what i figured out on, out here in these shows and on the show floor and stuff is it's like you know the people who are working in those booths they got no clue right yeah, yeah. i mean this this makes or breaks uh, a huge chunk of PR for this company. How much did they spend for that real estate, right? Yeah, and you're still doing it though. No, I am. I am. And still maybe it'll make it. even more of a story because they tried to not let you do it. Maybe I they don't. Wanted I this. don't think so. I wouldn't oh, want no. the PR that I didn't want someone to test my product. That's true. Right. Especially it's someone as handsome as Lou. That's right. See, because I do it big time, all the time. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> 
You invited I agree. me here. I, you yeah, invited yeah, me yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, did I invite you I here? I don't know. Actually, I think I invited myself. I think I oh. invited Austin Oh, Big here. John needs some credit. I oh, gave no, you credit. I don't need credit. Oh, okay. No, but you blew my cover, though. Did I? I was going to be like, oh, my God, I handed it off. But I didn't know what happened. Oh, I stole it from you. Sorry. I stole it out of his bag. No, no, no. It's John, John. anybody who watched my last video leading up to it, uh, you saw a little glimpse of us trying to get our hands on this on day, our first day on the show floor. And both Austin and John tried the first time and got shut down. I got shut down, then the two yeah. of them got shut down, and then final day, Big John making it happen. The worst part about it, she was so nice. <laughs> she was like, oh, I'm so sorry, the first one was rude. There you go. Like, she like, did the whole like. Truthfully, truthfully, I'm going to be very, very clear in the piece of content that I create about this that it is a prototype and that, of course, nothing is Ben proof. I'm going to be clear about that. And truthfully, a little bit of extra rigidity can't be a bad thing. Yeah. No, yeah. It, it might make it like. Very highly bend resistant. There you go. Enough yeah. that it's probably not a problem. There you go. And if that is the conclusion of my video, guess what's going to happen? They're going to sell a lot of these cases. So, Incipio, I love you. You should love me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is going to. You should love me, but I'm going to abuse you. <laughs> but you should love me after that. It's an abusive relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're just you're showing your love through the hurt that you give them. Yeah, yeah. Hey, this, I'm Marcus. This, this conversation just took a turn. Did you see the Zen phone too? I did not. Oh. And I meant to also. Like, I, I heard about it a lot. And I heard, oh, this is people too this interested in it, but I never got to it. Oh, I would have loved to get your take on it. That is such a shame. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm sure you'll see it. I'm sure you'll look at it eventually. I'll probably, yeah. I'll probably have a video. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Either way, uh, if we want to not stay in Vegas, Right. Yeah. Okay, we should I know, probably. Fun, guys. So, um, can can we at least get like everyone to kind of jump in, and we'll do we'll do a sign off. We I get mean, to stay in the suite after you guys leave, right? No, absolutely <laughs> not. That's not mine. Not a chance. So uh, awesome show. We got seven thousand people tuned in to see by far the biggest right. collab that uh, we've ever had the pleasure wow, of hosting. Look at this frame so, right now. People. Damn. Look, look at this. This and is. Uh, some, like, somebody <laughs> fell in over. I'm a body. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Did everyone in one. Wait, 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 yeah, we, we got room on that side. I'll move over. I'll move over. Hey. All right. All right. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've had all the Linus Media Group guys here. We've got the TLD Today crew. We've got Austin. We've got Marcus. We've got Lou. We've got your average consumer. And uh, this has been a ton of fun. And of course, the archive will be up later for those of you who missed it. I think that's pretty much all there is to it. Peace, guys. See ya. Bye. Bye. And chill. Man, chill. Guys, awesome. see your voice is like Ooh. gone. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to have ginger tea last night, but nobody else can see. No, that would be good. So that was the Wayne Show. That was the Wayne Show. It's still technically live because we're doing the outro roll. But nah.